Hey guys, this is Wolfie here, and we got some news to cover it for the city of Final Fantasy on the Omnia Global. But before I do, I want to send a heartfelt congratulations to the Broadway Saint and his family for the birth of their baby boy. He's so cute. Yeah, I'm a sucker for cute things. But definitely, this is a heartfelt congrats to the Broadway Saint and his family for, for the birth of their baby boy. And here we go with the news. Now, mind you, I am on a Bluetooth device for a microphone. You might still hear some stuff here and there throughout the recording of this video. I'm waiting for a bus to get home from work. Thank you, second shift. So we get to the home, once we get to the home screen, I'll go over some stuff here and there in a little bit more detail. Once we connect, folks. And I'm not so sure if there is if, about the whole maintenance thing. We haven't seen anything on that just yet. But I want to go over a few things here and there. With the lost chapter for Celeste, that actually took me the 75,000 gems. Because you notice my gem count is lower. And <clears throat> from that 75,000 gems, because I have very few to little tickets to use, I did not get the Celeste's EX weapon that way. I was able to get the EX weapon through the 300G token. So that's how I do manage to get Celeste's EX weapon is through those G tokens. Which, I mean, I'm, I mean it is what it is. Now, for Fangs of Promise, this is the um, global debut of Urban Yung Fang. With the report on this banner. And it's not because, I mean, I'm not a fan of Zell at all. I mean, he is, he is fun to use, it's just I'm like, I always found it to be a bit annoying, in my personal opinion. It took me 25 tickets to get Fang's 35, and that was my ultimate, ultimate goal for that. So I now have Fang maxed out, ready to grumble. So, and then also with the World of Illusions, the permanent return of the Trials of Pandemonium, Fang, Selfie, and Beatrix make that look like an EX, look like a joke. Um, I mean, if you want guys want me to film the EX with that team, I'll gladly do so upon request. Now, the known issues here, we're going to go into this a little bit. So, this is a bunch of text issues. And it looks like the passive is behaving correctly as per correct description. So, and then also a bunch of stuff here and there from a few weeks ago. And it looks like Android users, it looks like they're still investigating the issue. So, we haven't seen anything quite as of yet. Hope I see something on that pretty soon, though. But with that out of the way, we're going to go into, first and foremost, the weekly draw for this week. And it features the 1535CP weapons for Zidane, Ishola, and Vivi. And this is every... Last 1535 CPP for Zidane, including his, excuse me, his 50 CP alternate weapon. And because I already have either these weapons or the passes for it, I'm going to be skipping this banner altogether. I'm not going to benefit from this at all. And yes, this is despite the first multi being half off. We know. Now, some good news here is that we got the Dissidia NT Free Edition Release Campaign. Now, some people are wondering what this is, what's going on here. Is that when Dissidia Final Fantasy NT was released last year, it actually did really bad sales-wise. I mean, I'm going to try to keep it clean, but that's actually what happened. I mean, towards November of last year, <clears throat> it was still struggling to sell copies because it was only at around half of a million copies sold with with the uh, format it had at the time which was not free to play so it was because of that shortly after that it was determined that the games could become more become more free to play so now that it's free to play on the PC via Steam and PlayStation 4, there's going to be a login bonus campaign for Opera Omnia players. 
So from 13th March 2019 at 8 a.m. UTC till Thursday 28th March 2019 at 7.59 UTC, we will be getting 200 gems a day for the next five logins. Now, mind you, Now my now mind you, this is not consecutive logins. This is the five logins within the time frame listed. And then I'm gonna shut up for a minute or two so you guys can see what's going on with the the city of Final Fantasy NT free edition. So now that we know for sure that we are getting 1,000 gems all together, and again, this is for the next five logins, and and the logins do not have to be consecutive. Just make sure you log in within the time frame, the aforementioned time frame. And with that, all that now all <coughs> with that now out of the way, we're gonna get into a preview for Act Two, Chapter One: Drive Chaos. Now, some people see this Act 2. Oh, so this is supposed to be Season 2 or Act 2? Well, the thing is, well, the thing is Season 2, Art 2, Act 2, it's the same thing. And that's me being blunt. So, Art 2, Chapter 1. Dry Chaos is almost here, during which Seven will join the cast. A special set of Forgotten City Co-op Quest, a solo only EX quest, and a World of Illusions treasure hunt will also be available for a limited time. So, if you guys remember from the calendar of events for this month, you'll notice that underneath the whole thing with Seven for the main story, you'll notice that there is a co-op and a, of a World of Illusions treasure hunt. Now, I believe this is going to be going on for every main story chapter going forward, and that's something I actually like. I definitely want to see more of that on global. More ways to get jams without have necessarily have to go through the main story to do so. And yes, you notice here that the, the young lass with the silver hair and a hand on who knows what that is seven for Final Fantasy Type Zero. And here it says, Act 1, Chapter 1, Primus Island must be cleared in normal mode in order to access Act 2. However, I did see something on YouTube which actually said that you not only have to clear that, but you also have to clear the co-op in order to get into Act 2. So, a little bit of a catch-22. The reason why I kind of say this is like, when I was going through, when I was starting up Chapter 11, in the first season, act or whatever, however you want to call it, I noticed that not only had to, I had to clear chapter ten, but I also said that was like there was a bit of a blinker missing by behind hard it thanks to decent memory, so you had to get certain analyze from the lost chapters ahead of beforehand. So it's not only that, but so not only the whole lost chapters bit, but also chapter ten. So. With Final, with Final Fantasy Type 07, one of my favorites when I was when I was playing Final Fantasy Great Axes. So, the bio on 7, a Kalma collected a Jito cadet in Class 0. She wields a sword that could turn into a whip. Hence her weapon class. Her insightfulness gives her sound judgment and a good ability to read others. A mothering nature earns her the respect of her juniors, and but her, but her inability to turn down a request does leave her a bit overwhelmed. <clears throat> now this is very seven here with this bio. And we're gonna go over the compatibility details, and I'm, su I'm surprised, but in a good way, about the recording. That 
way, you know, people can, like, it's, it's, I mean, for some of us, it's easy to understand. So, command abilities. Snake, bite, and lash. Now, in JP, this is called catch and lash. So, this is called snake bite. I mean, it's pretty cool. I like the new wording. So this is in, in its base form, you have a four hit melee break attack. Not elemental, thank goodness. Deals extra damage to targets inflicted with snake bite. So this is one of those, it's like, to get the extra damage, you actually have to keep up the first. And with her, you, in, the, in the snake bite, I'll get over there in a little bit, is, see here, inflicts one level of snake bite, max three levels on target for six turns. I like this, and the reason why I like this snake bite, it's a unique debuff, and it's frame. I like that. I like frame debuffs. And however, the setback down this is that when it comes down to multiple targets, it resets the level of snake bite inflicted previously on a different targets. So if you get snake out of by three I one target, but you miss the move on another person and another foe, it, it kind of cancels out. I always found that annoying. When, I, when, um, when the sense of being pushed that I saw. Now the extension here, this is largely increased break damage. Stolen bravery may exceed up to 150%. So, yes, this is the overflow I was hinting at. Triggers additional HP attack if brave is at least 100% of max bravery after the last hit. Again, I like this. Increased turn rate when inflicting break or attacking the target inflicted with break. Again, I like this. And this actually kind of goes down good with Fang and her moves. So that's not a bad combination. I'm going to test it out just for fun. What, what's, what's I get the chance to? Elemental Lash. What this is is a fire, ice, and thunder melee, brave, and HP attack. That's all it does. It's three elements, and this actually would work against the in the ultimate effort trials because of the thunder and ice elements kind of canceling the fire aspect of it, damage wise. Now the extension, this is again, this is one where you need to get her all the way up to Crystal Strength 60. One additional use of Elemental Lash. It adds the two additional break hits. This is why I want her. Tremendously increased cumulative break damage. Brave attack one up to self for six turns. Increased turn rate when inflicting break. Or attacking, attacking target already broken. Brave bravery wise. Brave attack becomes brave attack plus for six turns upon use. Brave attack plus this is a powerful fire, ice, thunder element range. Brave attack, so she actually has a. This no longer is just melee. She also has the ranged aspect to it, so this kind of helps her out in the long run. And snake bite. What this does is lowers defense. The higher the snake bite stack, the more defense it goes. The flow. It's lower down the defense. Oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. And on a roll for not being able to talk right today, folks. So, when it comes to her banner, the only thing we know for sure is that Ren will be on that banner with her. And it will be Ren's EX weapon. And the reason why I say it like that is that because the global is known for changing things. Because on the JP banner, it's actually Shadow that comes along with Ren to support Seven on the particular banner. However, Global is known for changing things. So remember on Interlude, they swapped out Ace for Pinello. And I and can somebody and I need somebody in the comments section let me know about Pinello when she got her 6060 awakening because I was looking at the notifications around the time and I didn't see anything note-wise on it. And my phone doesn't really update as as quickly as everybody else's. When it comes to updates here and there. So, please somebody let me know when it was. Because I got no notation on it. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of scratching my head a little bit on that one. But when it comes to 7's banner, I will be pulling on it. Because I like 7. 
and I want to get her 15 and 35 up and running as soon as possible. And I do have the red crystals, like, ready to set her up at Crystal Strength 60, so that way I can already reap the benefits from her gear. And if I do get Rem's EX weapon, I mean, I'm not going to go after Rem's EX weapon, but if I do get it, her EX weapon, this could be just the icing on the cake. That's how I see it anyway. Again, this is Willie here sending congrats to the Broadway scene for the birth of his son. He's such a cutie. And I will catch you on the flip side.